Hello ladies and gentlemen and uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, whoever you are watching this video, my name is Lars Heuklan and I'm a Norwegian and uh, I am recording now a video that I'd like to welcome you to watch. It's called Anxiety and Peace and uh, my standpoint there, except for being in the word of the Lord for ages, uh, <laughs> since 1979, uh, I have the last 12 years been working at a psychiatric hospital in Bergen, Norway, and uh, I do have some uh, views on on anxiety. Now, um, there are many kinds of uh, fears and anxieties that we can uh, experience in a lifetime. Sometimes we get panic attacks, sometimes we are afraid to go to the doctor sometimes we are afraid to go to the dentist and this is one that i have struggled with uh, for many years in my life and also we have many many different phobies like a phobia of spiders closed or open rooms heights and the list just goes on for forever uh, sometimes we're afraid of blood or syringes anything sharp and uh, sometimes anxiety can be an illness it could be a psychosis or a neurosis and uh, there are many forms for anxiety sometimes we have obsessive compulsive disorder and that can also uh, have be um, connected to anxiety we have ptsd and uh, we have separation anxiety. I know that uh, many dogs, for instance, have that. And sometimes we humans have that as well. Now, so the topic of today is anxiety and peace. And I'd like to look at the three different areas today. And the first is peace of mind. The second is peace from rest. And the third one is peace from heaven. Now, anxiety is a great problem for us who are believers because anxieties can separate us from God. God didn't mean for us to go around and being afraid all the time. That's why we read in the Bible, fear not, fear not, fear not. Do not be afraid. And uh, I want to use a few examples, if I may, and uh, then I'll talk a little bit uh, around these areas and of course this is only a single episode uh, a single video but uh, if you want to you could of course uh, well, later I want to record five videos on fear and faith so that is yet to come but for this first video I want to mention a man who was experiencing great demands in his life and these great demands that he had on his life uh, caused him to have panic attacks and he had his heartbeat was racing he had the chest pain uh, he had palpitations and uh, he couldn't sleep at night and he came to the doctor and he said uh, uh, can you fix this for me and the doctor said no i'm afraid not you have to reduce your stress levels it's you who need to fix this and sometimes it is like that with us that uh, we get in trouble uh, because we don't live as close to the lord as we should we don't focus on him and we focus more on ourselves and our shortcomings and our faults and uh, you know the problems that we have but when we let our anxiety rob us from god's peace then we have a problem and if you need help you need to seek it you need to look for it god wants to give you and me healing and peace in our lives now there was a mus musician that uh, did not have these uh, qualities in his life and the problem he had was that he had too many people to please uh, and he said that it was all about him he said it's all about me he said uh, so because he had so many people to please trying to bring himself across and 
do as good as he could so people would uh, look up to him and uh, people would uh, demand more of him um, because he was trying to please everybody he was losing his sleep he was overworked and that was because he wanted to please everybody else now he went to a counselor and he started getting into prayer and that helped him a lot and he came to the place where he had to choose do i choose god's peace or do i choose my own pride that's a very serious question there do you choose to focus your eyes on god and what he has and get as close to him as you possibly can <clears throat> or do you try to satisfy yourself do you try to become popular do you try to follow your own pride and be as popular as you can trying to please everybody these two things are opposites now um i would like for us that the word of god would be like a narcotic that we need it all the time and i work as at my psychiatric hospital i work with many people who have problems with uh, drugs and drug abuse and uh, they want it all the time as often as they can now, wouldn't it be great if we wanted the word of god as often uh, as possible that we were craving it like mad i mean we need to lean on the lord and we need to do it not just today but we need to do it for the rest of our lives it's not just about us and sometimes we are trying to do too much <clears throat> and we want to give ourselves the honor and say look what i have done that is uh, part of the problem but let me read in mark chapter 10 mark chapter 10 <clears throat> verse 35 to uh, 45 35 to 45 and james and john john the sons of zebedee came unto him saying master we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire and he said unto them what would ye that i should do for you they said unto him, Grant us that we may sit, one on the right, thy right hand, and the other on thy left, in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask. Can ye drink the cup that I drink of, and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Baptized with? And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, <coughs> Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized with all shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is mine to, is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be much displeased with James and John. But Jesus called them to him and sa saith unto them, Ye you know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and their great ones exercise authority upon them. But so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister, and whosoever of you will be the chiefest shall be servant of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Now this story tells us that to be the greatest, the highest in the kingdom of God, we need to be the lowest here on earth. We need to be everyone's servant. It's all about serving the Lord, people. Christ came to serve others. He came to serve us. And in his picture, after his, uh, after his uh, idea, and after the, the picture that he made for us, the symbol he had for us, then we must be the servant of God. We must be serving 
others is not all about us, it's about others. We must be a transistor for God's power. Now, the sooner we realize this, the sooner we'll be healed. We're not meant to get the glory. We are to give God the glory. Now, there was this man who was an extra in a film, and he was very proud of it. And he said, did you see me in that movie I was in? And he was only in there for like two minutes, maybe. But he was so proud because I've been in the movies. And sometimes we are like that. You know, we, we try to show how, how great we are and how clever we are and all that we can do. But it's not about us at all. It's about God. We seek confirmation from others. And the truth is that uh, the pressure we're under uh, will break us. Now, science tells us that Earth as the center of the universe is a theory that's called a, a geocentric theory with the Earth in the middle. Then you have a theory about the Sun as the center of the universe, and that's the heliocenter theory. Now, we often seem to think that we are the center of the universe. But Christ needs to be the center of our universe. That is a Christocentric theory, you could say. Um, but let me come into these uh, three uh, points that I said I wanted to touch on in this video. The first one is peace in the mind. Peace in the mind. Do you have peace in your mind? Anxiety poisons our minds. Uh, some of the worst things that can happen, happen to, to somebody. Uh, it was uh, abandonment. Uh, they were abandoned by, as a child, uh, by the parents. And this caused this person to become physically ill. Sometimes when you when you have uh, mental things that you struggle with, the body responds by becoming ill. So um, uh, this person had serious anxiety and depression because of being abandoned as a child. Now, the truth is that we need the Holy Spirit. We need Bible and prayer. We always need those two together. That is what we need. Um, because there are so many ways that we can get mentally in, injured, you might say. Uh, and this affects us in a very bad way. Jesus said uh, we shouldn't worry what to eat or what to, to wear or... And we shouldn't worry about these uh, physical things. We need to concentrate on other things. So let's go to uh, Philippians chapter 4. And let me read these things in uh, Philippians 4, 8 that we are supposed to concentrate on. Finally, brethren. <coughs> pardon me. Finally, brethren. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just who, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. These are the things, people, that we should be concentrating on, that we should be looking at and try to get in our lives. Things that are true. Things that are honest, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely and of a good report. Isn't that a good list? That's what we should concentrate on. Uh, your thoughts take you to different places. Sometimes you don't want to go there, but then you've got the wrong kind of thoughts. 
Uh, <clears throat> now, let Christ steer your thoughts. Let him direct your thoughts. Uh, focus on Jesus so that your thoughts are concentrated on him. Uh, we can cleanse our minds from many things if we keep our eyes on God, if we keep our eyes on Christ. Philippians 4, 9 <clears throat> says, Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. So saying that all these things that the disciples had seen and they had received it and they had heard it and had seen it in, in Jesus, sorry, uh, in, in Paul, it's Paul writing here. And it says if we do all these things and keep our eyes on things that are pure and, and all that that I read from the verse before, the verse number eight, then it says that if we do that, the God of peace shall be with us. Isn't that wonderful words? You know that you can have true peace. You can have a supernatural kind of peace when you trust in the Lord, when you go to him. And uh, <clears throat> if we do these things, that would give us the peace of God. Now, you can do an exercise if you want to. There are many things you can do to try to combat your anxieties. Uh, but uh, uh, try to write up all your worries and anxieties. And then you write up what God has helped you with. Now, if you're a Christian and you've been a Christian for some time, I'm sure that the list of what God has helped you with will be quite long. And sometimes we don't experience the peace of God because we're not close enough to him. We are separated from him in that way that uh, there's something that has broken our connection. The intimacy that we are supposed to have with God. We sometimes don't have that because we have removed us a little bit from God and the things that uh, pertain to God and then we don't get to experience the peace that God wants us to have. He doesn't go stray away from us, it's we that stray away from him. He's always there so when we go back to him just swallow that bitter tablet and just go back to the Lord, just pour yourself out in prayer and just Get in there, get your focus back on the Lord. That will help. Now, <clears throat> he can give you a peace of mind. And for many of us, this sounds too good to be true. But the thing is that when, the thing is, when we think of what pertains to God, when we think about godly things, when we fill our lives with his word, we fill our lives with prayer to him, then we experience some great peace in our lives. Doesn't mean we don't have problems, doesn't mean we don't have challenges, but we grow through these challenges because when we go through these challenges, then God is with us in the storm. So that was peace of mind. Now, let me see number two on peace from rest. Now, many people say that, um, you know, when people come and they ask you to say, how are you doing? And they say, oh, I'm, I'm busy. And more than often, that is the answer that we give. We are busy and we think that being busy is the way to success. Um, and a full calendar is something that uh, tends to tell others that, uh, oh, yeah, we've got plenty to do. We, we're being very busy. We're, we're doing uh, what we need to do. We got it all planned out. But the thing is that when your calendar is completely full, then you have no time for what God wants you to do. 
God is normally what is being last on your list. Uh, <clears throat> there was this woman that was uh, doing two jobs and doing two jobs, people. That is very, very hard to do. There, I know even some people that do three jobs. But, of course, they can't be all 100% jobs because then they'll be working 300%. So, but, uh, you know, the different part-time jobs. But this woman was doing two jobs because she wanted to climb the ladder of rank. She wanted to get a better job, a higher position, more money. And who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want have to have success uh, in their work life? When when they work hard and they accomplish things, that's what we in our society think about as successful people. But what happened was, because it was too much to do those two jobs, this woman, she got tired and she got anxious. She started getting palpitations and she started losing weight and she was wondering what is the what do I have to do? Do I have, need to have some kind of an operation? Do I need to get some pills to help with this? And the main problem was, as before, stress. Stress stresses you out. Stress makes you physically ill. <clears throat> now, what happened to this woman was that she fell on her knees uh, before God and prayed and her prayer was very simple it was <clears throat> please god give me peace give me peace please now after she had this prayer made this prayer she saw that she found that people were willing to help her people from church and uh she got invited to dinner many places and people was actively actively helping with the uh, just normal things casual things that uh, uh, was hard for her to get done in in a normal day uh, but uh, when she got her focus over on the lord and off herself and off the climbing climbing the ladder of work, then she got much happier. Now, the car runs out of fuel if you don't fill it. You probably knew this already. Uh, something else, mobile phones. Oh, we're so used to them now, aren't we? We can't live without them. Mobile phones, they need charging. If they run out of power, you can't use them. See, this is right. And we as people are the same. That's why we got the Sabbath day. That's why God said it's good for man to have one day of rest in a week. And earlier in the old days, the people used to work and, <clears throat> and they would stop working when the sun went down because then it went dark you couldn't see what you were doing and you didn't do more, any more work but clever as we are as humans we created artificial light so now we can work day or night we can work all night if you want because we got we got lights we got electricity i got light up here it's a led light very good, very, gives a lot of, I, I could sit here in my study and I could be studying all night, even if it's dark outside in the middle of winter when it's pitch black, because we have artificial light. And because we have this artificial light, we now find that we have to be careful that we get our physical rest. Now earlier you rested, when, when the light went off, you couldn't do much. So you rested. But, you know, it's the same spiritually as well. Spiritually, we also need to rest. And we need to take care of our physical way, uh, shall I say, our spiritual well-being. Uh, it's important that we, we get the rest that we need 
both physically and spiritually. And the Sabbath day used to be the day of rest. Now, I want to go to <clears throat> Matthew now. Let's see if that is Matthew. Matthew chapter 11, <clears throat> verse uh, 28 through 30. These are well-known verses that some of you might know by heart. Come unto me, all ye that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and, we, uh, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now, what we're saying here is very important that you get this. If you haven't underlined these three verses in your Bible already, I would encourage you to do so. It says that Jesus will be your strength. He, his burden is light, is not heavy. And he designed the world. He knows how we function in it. And he calls us to slow down. Stop stressing. It's not good for you. And if you want to find out more about this, you know, maybe you should see the other videos when I get to record them. Uh, faith, <clears throat> fear and faith. Uh, I will start recording them as soon as I, as I can. But Jesus says that we should come unto him with everything that weighs us down. Because it's not good to be weighed down. It's not good to stress. When we stress, we get physically ill. Now, <clears throat> let me go to First um, Peter and read a couple of verses there. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, he got bent down. First Peter, chapter five, just the last chapter of Peter. And verse 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. We should um, try to do God's work, because when we do God's work this, and focus on the spiritual, he will do our work and he will take care of the physical needs that we have. Casting all your care upon, upon him, for he careth for you. So, um, what we care about, all our problems, all our stress, we put that on Jesus. We just load it off and we can leave it there. Now, verse number eight is one that's very familiar. Uh, Peter here says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. <clears throat> so uh, Satan comes and he's the roaring lion in this verse and he wants us to be busy he wants us to be stressed he wants us to get our focus off God this is exactly what he wants and he's happy when we give in to this when we take our eyes off God like Peter walking on the water we take our eyes off God and then we start sinking that's how it goes every time. Now, if you remember Psalm 23, verse 2, this is David writing one of the loveliest pieces of scripture in the entire Bible. He says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside um, the still waters. Now, isn't that lovely? Doesn't that sound peaceful? That is the kind of peace that God wants you and me to have. Um, also, Psalm 46, verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. We, <laughs> that's a very nice song, actually. Be still and know that I am God. Uh, but, you know, be still and know that I'm God. Be, get rid of the stress. Just know that God is there. God will help us. God will take our burdens off. You know, he will help us with this. We need 
rest and that was point number two so there's one point left that's point number three and that says peace from heaven peace from heaven do you know that if you are a christian god is with you but we're not home yet and that's important to know there was a, a mother who uh, experienced losing her son he got run over by a 18 wheeler truck and that is something that is mm, that is so hard can you imagine well many some people have experienced losing dear ones and losing some of their children but hopefully not too many but losing her son just broke her heart and she, and she got physically ill and she got to the point where she said what is the point of praying she didn't see any point in going to god and unloading her problems on god she actually isolated herself and uh, hardly went outside at all and she had no energy to keep up appearances she was just basically staying at home but then she started praying after a while after a good while she started praying and she surrendered to god and what she found was that it helped for her to help others. She started a group for parents who had lost their children. People that have ex had experienced exactly the same, maybe not an 18-wheeler truck, but they lost their children in uh, different circumstances. And she was able to use some of her grief that she had uh, for something positive to be able to help others you know god is with you and we promised this in the word of god now in deuteronomy chapter 31 and uh, verse 6 uh, yes verse 6 it says be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. This is a promise from God. We must go to him, as it says in Proverbs, and I have not put that in. Anyway, in Proverbs 18.10, it says that we, we have to go to him. Some things are just too heavy for us to carry on our own. Well, let's go to Hebrews and in chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Oh. These things are bending. It's kind of hard to find them. Chapter 10, verse 24 to and, and 28. The writer, the author of Hebrews here says, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So we should support each other. We should help each other. And the experiences we have when we've gone through hardship in our lives makes us able to help others later on. We must encourage each other. And um, by doing this, heaven is getting a little bit closer to us. Uh, we don't want any panic attacks or any palpitations. Uh, we want to uh, focus on the fact that we're getting closer to the time when we are going to be with the Lord. 
Psalm 23, verse 6, David writes here, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's focus on that instead of the hardships we go through in this life. And let's focus on what lies ahead in heaven, in the rapture, in things that are will come later on. We must look forward and in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I'm speaking Norwegian now, uh, for, uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, sorry, and verse 17 and 18. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceedingly exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not, not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So we've got to look forward, and we've got to focus on spiritual things. We've got to focus on God. We don't need to face all our problems uh, on our own we can find support from others from other believers i think this is the last scripture verse now revelation chapter 21 and verse 4 says and god shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Isn't this lovely? Let me finish off this video with a, a quote from the Bible that Paul wrote, wrote long time ago. He said, comfort each other with these words. And soon I will start on fear and faith. So there'll be an eight-part video series on, on fear. But I hope these words have been a blessing to you. May God be with you till we meet again.